All right, welcome back. We are going to look at a turbine work problem. So what we're gonna do is, let's review real quick what turbine work is. Work in a turbine is a constant entropy process. It's not a constant enthalpy process. Because it's constant entropy, which means it goes straight up and down on your Mollier diagram, we can measure the work done in an ideal turbine by that change in enthalpy, all right? And we can find that change in enthalpy either using the Mollier diagram or the actual steam tables. And we're gonna solve it using both methods here. So let's set up a problem. Turbine, uh, so in both turbines, we start off with these initial condition of 785 PSIG inlet steam and it exhausts to a condenser. Let's use a vacuum problem uh, so that we're, we can do some conversions here. Let's say 10 inches of mercury vacuum. Yeah, and then in turbine alpha We'll use 90% quality steam, and in Turbine Bravo, we use 100% quality steam. And the question is, what's the difference in work in watts between these two turbines? Really, what is that 10% of additionally drier steam, how much difference does that make in a power plant? And the answer is, you've seen already, it's, it's a huge difference. Having dry steam to spin a turbine gives us so much uh, more energy output. All right, so let's solve this using any, meeny, money, mo. Well, let's, oh, let's fix a couple things. Pay attention to your, your initial units. So we have to convert this to PSIA because the steam tables are in PSIA. And so pounds per square inch gauge, if you remember our relative versus absolute pressure scales, the relative pressure of zero is an absolute pressure of 14.47 uh, pounds, absolute, right? And so if I've got 785 PSIG, that's pounds per square inch gauge above a relative zero, I need to add this other 15 pounds to get my pressure in PSIA. So 785 PSIG from here is 800 pounds PSIA from our absolute zero. So our initial condition is 800 PSIA, and it's going to a condenser that's at 10 inches mercury of vacuum. So once again, let's, I just like redrawing this every time. We'll make this an absolute, and this is the vacuum. So on an absolute scale, this is perfect zero. And this is 29.97 inches of mercury. On a vacuum scale, this is zero, and this is 29.97 inches of mercury. So because we know we are somewhere in here down, right, 10 inches of mercury vacuum, we know we're above our relative zero by... 19.97, because that's what's left, 29.97 minus uh, 10. So the difference here is 19.97 inches mercury absolute. Now we need to convert that to PSI, and we'll go to our handy dandy. We have inches of mercury. Multiply by 0 0.49115. 19.97 times 
0.49115. That gives us 9.8 PSIA. So we just went from, con we just converted from 10 inches of mercury vacuum to 10 inches of to a 19.97 inches of mercury absolute, and then converted that to 9.8 PSIA. So we're going from a condensed from a steam inlet pressure of 800 PSIA to a condenser, and we're just going to round that up to say 10 PSIA. Now that's confusing. That yeah, you could solve this one without converting if you just made that mistake. Anyway, all right, I won't use that. Let's see what this looks like on our Molia diagram. 800 PSIA, so our, we find our constant pressure line of 800 pounds square inch absolute. So the blue line right here is the 1,000. That line below it is 900. This line here is 800. Okay, so 800, and I said we're starting with a 90% quality, which is a 10% moisture content. So I need to find where this moisture content line of 10% crosses the 800 PSIA constant pressure line. And it looks like it's right there. There's 800 pounds, and this is 10%. Oh, nice. So that gives me a, an enthalpy of a, so initial enthalpy of 1130. 1130 BTUs per pound mass. Now, I didn't bring my ruler. This is the part that sucks. This is where people go wrong. Let's find that 10 PSIA line here and get just roughly below where we think we're going to be, that where that comes down. Draw a light line so I know where to stop. And... We're just past the middle of that. So I end up right about here, which is between 850 and 860. So around 855 BTUs per pound mass. And if I had to guess, I would say we're probably just a hair on the low side of that, maybe 854. Let's, let's go roll with eight, minus 855. So our difference on this first turbine, the work performed by this first turbine is 275 BTUs per pound mass. All right, now let's solve the work done by the turb that same turbine with the same initial conditions from 800 PSIA to 10 PSIA, but with 100% quality steam. So what that changes is our starting point. All right, we follow that 800 pound line all the way up here to the saturation line, because that's the dry saturated steam. And we're almost right on this line. We're almost, we're just tiny, tiny, tiny bit under 1,200 BTUs per pound mass. So this is alpha. Bravo is initial of 1,200 BTUs per pound mass. We're going to, whoops, 1,008 right there. down to our 10 PSIA line, again, right here. And we end at just a touch over 900. 900 BTUs per pound mass. Well, that gives us an easy 300 BTUs per pound mass, and this value is Bravo Turbine. So the difference between those two is 25 BTUs per pound mass. Okay, so now we just convert 
that to watts and we have in here our handy dandy conversion of doo -doo -doo -doo. oh we're not there yet eh, times a flow rate so that that work difference 25 BTUs per pound mass um, flow rate generally about 108,000 I might give you 105 or 106 110 well, let's say 108 thousand pounds mass per hour now I could give you this in cubic feet per second I can give you this in you, this is what you want to convert whatever I give you to for example hint hint if I gave it to you in gallons per minute you would see how many um, gallons per minute how do you need to convert gallons per minute to uh, BTUs per pound mass? Uh, or BTUs per hour. And there's BTUs per pound mass. And then pounds, gallons, per ounce, ounces to, oh boy, that, yeah, you'd end up doing a lot of, I don't know, I'm undecided on whether I'll do that. That's how the problem, actually, I've already built that question, and I do have it in gallons per minute. So I may rethink that and edit the question. We'll see. Let's, for this one, let's keep working on this, 25 BTUs per pound mass. Time, which is the difference between the two turbines times the mass flow rate. Q equals mass flow rate times a change in enthalpies, right? And this is the difference in enthalpy between the two. And we have BTUs per hour. And BTUs per hour times 0.2931. Watts per BTUs per hour, which cancels BTUs and hours out, left with watts. So 25 times 108,000 times 0.2931. On. On 25 times 108, times 0.2931 equals. So 791,370 watts. All right, that was done using the Molier diagram. Let's solve that again, actually looking up the enthalpies. So the same turbine, we know that we're starting at 800 PSIA. We want table two. And we need to find that initial enthalpy. So 800 PSIA has an H sub F of 509. BTUs per pound mass, but the actual enthalpy of 90% quality is that initial H sub F plus nine, uh, yeah, 90% times H sub F G. So 800 PSIA 689.5, 90% of that is 0.9 times 689.5 equals 620.55, 509.8 plus 620.55, Eleven hundred and thirty point three five 
BTUs per pound mass. Let's check with what we got. And that's pretty close. We came up with, just using the Molier diagram, 1130 BTUs per pound mass. Looking it up in the steam tables, 1130.35. Nice. Now let's look at the... So that's how you find the initial enthalpy. Finding the final enthalpy is a little tougher because we don't know what the quality of that exit steam is. So you still need to use both the steam tables and the Molier diagram, but you can find a more accurate starting point here. Because you still got to drive straight down. Does that make, hopefully that makes sense. What I'm saying is that we found our exact perfect starting point for that quality of steam. What we don't know is what's the quality of the steam in the, uh, on the exit of the turbine. Right? All we know is we've been extracting energy from that steam, which means the moisture content is going um, up. Right, There's more and more moisture as we extract energy from that steam. And where it ends, we need to use this to figure out. All right, but well, we got a good starting point. Let's see what our starting point is for what did we say? 100% uh, quality. Oh yeah, this one's easy. 100% quality steam at 800 psi a. So table two, pressure 800 psi a. And 100% saturated is the H sub G, right? So our starting, our actual starting value is 1199.3. And we had come up with 1200. So we're still going to be we're right on the money, right? Real, real, real close. And so you, when, you were, when you're doing this on the Molier diagram, you, whether you're finding the, initial, the starting points in the steam tables or you're doing the whole thing on the Molier diagram, you should be fairly close to this. Like, you might come up with 750 to 800 and 20, 30, 40 uh, thousand watts. But you shouldn't be off by a factor of 10, right? You shouldn't come up with something that's like 1 million. Um, so that should be pretty close. But that's solving that turbine work problem again. Once, as a quick review, pay attention to your units. Make sure you're working with PSIA. And I'm not going to give you a PSIA for everything. So you'll have to do some conversions to show that you can do that as part of solving the problem. Um, what did I miss here on this one? I think that's good. All right. That's the quick review on the work of a turbine problem. Thanks.